Algebra 2. It's really hot in this room, so I need to drink some water. Well, uh, today we talked about solving uh, equations and inequalities that have to do with absolute value. So, therefore, I'm going to show you how to do that again. Uh, so, the example problem that we did was the absolute value of 3n plus 4 is equal to 19. We have to remember is about absolute value is the inside can equal 19, so we put 3n plus 4 equals 19, but also the inside could equal negative 19, okay? Because once we, if this were equal to negative 19, once you take the absolute values, it's equal to the positive version. That is again what absolute value is. It's whatever you have in here, it's the positive version um, once you take the absolute value. So. This equals 19, this equals negative 19 on the inside. So we set up two equations. You're going to get two answers for each of these. So now we have to solve for n for both of these. When you do this, do not change the plus 4. Don't make that minus 4. No, no, no. Don't change that. You change the number on the outside. 19, negative 19. Don't change that symbol. Okay? So now we need to solve for n, so we have to subtract 4. So we have 3n is equal to 15, divide by 3, n is equal to 5. That wasn't so bad. There you go, n is equal to 5, and now let's find our other answer here. So we subtract 4. This feels really good, I have a fan on me right now. Ah, oh, feels so good. So now we have 3n equals negative 23, and again, divide by 3, n is equal to negative 23 over Three. So again, you have two answers here. Uh, if you plug it in, they both work. They both. Uh, this one, if you plug it in, will end up be being 19. This one, you plug it in, ends up being negative 19. Therefore, when you take the absolute value of both, they both equal 19. So again, when there's an equal sign, set it equal to the positive. Set it equal to the negative. Okay. Now the other one wasn't an equation. The next two problems, because we only did three examples in class. The next one is actually an inequality. So solve the inequality. So the first one we did was the absolute value of 4y minus 2 is less than or equal to 10. And remember what I said about this. What determines if it's an and or or inequality is the direction of the symbol. Not the or equal to. We could do away with that. It doesn't even matter. Um, regarding if it's and or or. It's a direction. If it's like this, it's going to be an and inequality. And so remember the way we set these up is you rewrite it the way it looks but without the absolute value symbols. But also, you're going to put your low limit here, you're going to put a negative version on this side. Okay? Because if you think about it, this on the inside has to be less than 10 or equal to it. So therefore, this has to be less than 10, but it can't go further than negative 10. If this right here were equal to negative 11, once you take the absolute value, it becomes not true, because 11 is not less than or equal to 10. So basically, this on the inside has to be in between 10 and negative 10. So we set it up this way. Notice they're both going the same direction. Now we need to get y by itself. So we add here, add in the middle, add to the right, add to the left. That gives us negative 8 is less than or equal to 4y, less than or equal to 12. Okay? And last step, we divide by 4. We have negative 2 is less than or equal to y, less than or equal to 3. And this would be your final answer. Again, uh, what you do to one, what you do to the middle, you have to do to the right and to the left. So we brought it down, we put positive 10 here, put a negative 10 on this side, we added 2 to all three sections, then we divided by 4 on all three sections, so we got negative 2 is less than or equal to y, less than or equal to 3, and that would be your answer, okay? Now the next one, since we just did an and, now we're going to do an or. So, if you have the absolute value of 2n plus 1, is greater than 7. Notice it's facing this way now. The absolute value is greater. We call this or. Okay? 
Because if you think about it, this right here has to be greater than 7. Okay? Has to be greater than 7. Now, as you go further and further negative, once it hits negative 8, if this were to e equal negative 8, then when you take the absolute value, you get a positive 8, which is greater than 7. So not only does this have to be greater than 7, but this also can be less than negative 7. So the way you set up the every or inequality is that you set it up just the way it looks without the absolute value, then set it up again, just switch the direction of the symbol and make that a negative. Again, do not, do not, do not change this symbol, okay, when you rewrite it. It's the number on the outside you change the symbol for, okay? So now, subtract 1. We have 2n is greater than 6 divided by 2. n is greater than 3. Or, subtract 1. You have 2n is less than negative 8 divided by 2. Or, n is less than negative 4. Okay, let's think about this again. If you pick a number that's in between 3 and negative 4, it won't work. So if I plug in 0, I get 0 plus 1 is 1. Absolute value of that is not greater than 7. So as n gets smaller and smaller past negative 4, this starts to be true. If I were to choose negative 5, that would give me negative 10 plus 1 is negative 9. Absolute value of negative 9 is positive 9, which is greater than 7. Same thing here. If I choose a number greater than 3, like 4, 4 times 2 is 8, plus 1 is 9, absolute value is greater than 7. So, you only have three types of problems for the homework tonight. You have the equal sign, you have the and statement, or inequalities, and you have the or inequalities. And this is how you set up every single or uh, inequality with absolute value. The last example is exactly how you set up all of the and inequalities with absolute value. And the first example is how you set all the inequality is with the equal sign. So I showed you the setup. Hopefully you follow the setup. If you do the setup correctly, it's really hard to go wrong. So good luck with that. And yes, there you have it. Good luck.